All right. Well, gentlemen, you'd think that most of the big news would have come out of San Diego Comic-Con, but it appears that Star Wars and Warner Brothers didn't get that memo. It is definitely an interesting day to be a fan of DC Comics. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. And then add to that uh, Star Wars releasing the full trailer for Andor Mm -hmm. and a change in the release date. Yeah, that trailer was amazing so i can't wait to talk about it (laughs) well we're going to dive into this along with a couple of major announcements for pot of thought pop you good pot of thought there you go sorry had a little stroke uh 2022 (laughs) uh this is tatooine sons it's true true. true. all of it was the name of the porg on the millennium falcon force is strong in my family What do you think his name is? (laughs) It's a big moment. I am a Jedi, like my father before me. Maybe Turbis? Do or do not. There is no try. Turbis? (laughs) Pablo, if you're listening to this live stream... That Porg's name is now Turbis. It's a good Star Wars name. We're not done yet. These guys record an awesome podcast called Tatooine Sons. Everybody was birthday weekend yeah. yeah so technically when people are listening to this it's birthday over yes but as we get ready to record we're speaking into the future because it's mm-hmm. birthday weekend podcast recording is weird man it is. it is happy birthday bb happy 19. birthday 17 years old mm-hmm. you can finally go to rated r movies <laughs> yeah <laughs> not like you haven't been going to rated this is, gonna be, this is bigger years. for him than like 21 what you, or what 18 what was your first rated r movie that we went to the theater for theater oh probably the accountant I think it was The Account, uh, yeah. which is a great movie. Fantastic, a fantastic movie. Fantastic movie. Anyway, well, we went to see Bullet Train. We'll talk, maybe we'll talk about we'll that We'll talk about later. that later. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, welcome to Tatooine Sons, a pop culture podcast. Uh, the only fan podcast to name a canon Star Wars creature and to be endorsed. Endorsed? Endorse? I can't talk. You are God. Okay, I'm just going to take yeah. over. <laughs> and to be endorsed by the writer-director of The Last Jedi, Ryan Johnson. Big news yep. coming for yep. Ryan uh, here in a couple minutes. Uh, we believe that pop culture is the mythology of our generation, that there is a story it is written on our souls and that these myths speak to that story and that is why we talk about star wars and marvel and dc and <laughs> all of the uh, epic franchises that you love so much i am david i am the dad hey, dad well, hello gentlemen i am honored to be joined every week by my two <laughs> amazing sons samuel the hut what do you got going this week yeah miss marvel dropped a little bit of a bomb there at the end of that last episode mm. yeah definitely mm. yeah. um with that we haven't had a chance to really talk about no it, so we've um, been so busy with all give the you other an news. opportunity to do yeah. that bb nate yeah dc is definitely going to be the t- company to watch over the next few months oh it's fun to watch right now it is it <laughs> always um, is it's yeah. been an interesting few days dad uh, i think we all know what you're talking about uh, yeah, and we're going to save it to the end because I feel like, you know, best for last, save the best for last. Cause mm-hmm. That trailer was great. Amazing. That was really good. <laughs> really amazing trailer. Uh, but thank you so much for listening to the show. Please follow the show on whatever podcast app that you're listening on. And do, please remember, lock it up in your calendar right now. Go ahead and jump on over to YouTube and search for the Potathon and subscribe right away because Potathon 2022 is going to be the place to be if yeah, you are a Star huge. Wars fan. September 17th, it begins at 8, or excuse me, 9, 8 a.m. our time, 9 yes. a.m. Eastern there you go. time. It's got to be your bowl. Um, <laughs> and this week was our first big guest announcement, our headliner guest. Yes. Yeah. Might as well just go go big right off the beginning of this. Um, Octu Radio, Alden Diaz. You know, Alden, about a year ago, created a thread on Twitter, which was a defense of the last jedi which was fantastic i screenshotted it i shared it on our post it'd be like got 20 some thousand shares on our facebook page because people were like either loving it or hating it but whatever it was it was awesome um with that well alden reached out to a specific guest and thought why not try to see if we can get him as a, a guest so Alden Diaz secured as the guest of honor for Potathon 2022, the legend himself, Ryan 
Johnson, Dang. and so the 65 minute wow. Holy crap. one-on-one interview is an intimate conversation with Ryan Johnson, who obviously did The Last Jedi. He's also done Knives Out, which was a fantastic movie, Ooh. the upcoming sequel, Glass Onion, uh, coming out this fall. It's a deep dive into Ryan's process as a writer and a director he talks about the fan response uh, to his star wars film the last jedi and then kind of insight for into what being a part of the star wars universe means to him Mm -hmm. Uh, so it's going to be fantastic um alden you know was quoted in in the press release about it he says it truly does the heart good to have ryan johnson joining the show for such an incredible cause ryan's work particularly in star wars has so much to do with the ideas of legacy and caring for the next generation so i can think of no Nobody better to help us highlight the amazing work Make a Wish does for children everywhere. The goal is to raise ten thousand awesome. dollars for Make a Wish. Mm-hmm. I have a feeling we're going to have that ten thousand dollars raised potentially even before, um, because the buzz <laughs> about this is already getting buzz in the in the media about this. But why why let Octu Radio take all we the can have all exactly. the, the credit? We got to yeah. make our own little announcement, yeah, um, with it. So I wish I had the audio. You know what? Let me just go ahead. You take it away. Hi, this is Christopher Sean Kaz from Star Wars Resistance. And I want to invite you to join me on Saturday, September 17th for Potathon 2022. I'll be hanging with my friends from Tatooine Sons, a pop culture podcast. And I want to see you there. Potathon is a day long charity podcasting event that raises money for the Make a Wish Foundation. The day is going to be filled with amazing shows, awesome guests, and lots of fun. Mark your calendars now and visit www dot the potathon dot com for more information about the event and how you can donate directly to make a wish. Can't wait to see you there. And hey, may the force be with you. Holy. That's crazy. I can't I, believe it. It was such a fun. Holy Star Wars resistance, Batman. I mean, it, that works. It mm-hmm. was good effort. It was an attempt. You know, he's, <laughs> playing, mm-hmm. he's playing uh, Nightwing. Nightwing. Yeah, Nightwing. In, in which which Gotham. Robin plays Nightwing is a dick. Yeah, Dick Dick Grayson. Grayson. Dick Grayson. So he's playing that in Gotham Knights. So we are super excited to have uh, Christopher Sean on the show. So awesome. cool. The conversation we had with him, which we've already recorded, is fantastic. Mm-hmm. Uh, so many different things happened in that that we had no idea were going to happen yeah. on that. So, so much fun. Super excited. Very about exciting. that. And uh, yeah. So yeah. Why, don't, why don't we stop talking about what we're going to talk about? Let's talk about what we're talking about. There you go. Are you ready to go mm-hmm. for this, BB Nate? I am. All right, go for it. My time. We, we just we can't not talk about the stuff going on with Warner Brothers in DC right now. But judging by what is going on, I'm very excited for the future of DC. So let me explain why. Have you ever danced with the devil in the pale moonlight? Yeah, I can fly. I'm here to fight for truth and justice in the American way. The people in this room, which one is A, wearing a spangly outfit, and B, not a fuse? There's only one god man, and I'm pretty sure he doesn't dress like that. Batman has no limits. So, um, DC no longer has a website anymore. DC, DCComics.com is not a thing anymore. It is strictly now just DC.com. Really? Changing it to an overall arching... Like Marvel.com. Ah. Like Marvel.com now. Interesting. Interesting. Also, the new UI of the website is very nice. And Black Adam, strangely, has For those of us that don't have any idea what he's talking user about, interface. Interface. thank you very um, much. All right. <laughs> but Black Adam does have the top billing on the website right now. Makes sense. He mm-hmm. should, because that's the next film coming yeah. out. So it's, and really it's well Dwayne done. the Rock Johnson. So yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, you it's, do. If, if if he says I want top building, you're like yes sir. Yes. Um, anyway, <laughs> yes, all right, so look, oh, we yeah, should probably yeah. get to the notes. I'd okay. Love to yeah, take it away. Yeah. <laughs> go as good it. as Nathan is, I don't think he can do it all without. <laughs> <that>. Sorry. <laughs> let's uh, let's talk about just briefly the situation going on right now with DC and WBD, which I found out is what it actually is now. Warner Brothers Discovery. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's not Warner Brothers anymore. Oh yeah, merger. Um. Well, Warner Brothers has been clearing house recently with the cancellation of many titles including but not limited to bb nate has is has a gift for understatement 
(laughs) (laughs) cleaning house no yeah no they they, anyway yeah Yeah. um including but not limited to batgirl and the scoob sequel there's definitely been a lot more over that's what we're going to talk about over the the cartoon yeah over the cartoon network is even getting some stuff canceled including hbo max and discovery plus and they're merging and it's uh, (laughs) a lot going on right now um it's definitely been an interesting time to be a dc fan or even just a movie fan or pop culture in general this is kind of a big deal right now it's Mm -hmm. everything i don't think we've seen a studio do this before i well, haven't since seen disney bought star wars and said hey Not all the legends that. but it wasn't the bloodletting that no, we've seen in no. the last few it's weeks it's been crazy so uh dad let's let's get you to start what do you think about this whole situation including you know the cancellation of batgirl and all of that yeah i mean it kind of started with that you know where that was the first big thing you saw was they canceled batgirl but this is you know looking back if you take a step back and you kind of look at what's happened since san diego comic-con and even before that <laughs> it feels like they knew that this was coming and they were just like let's just get through san diego comic-con and then let's deal with the fallout of this i um it is getting such mixed reactions it is. through social media um first of all for everybody involved in the production mm-hmm. of batgirl for everybody involved in the production of scoob and all of the other things because there's multiple different yeah. um i um um uh, projects. productions yeah. projects that have been canceled and scrapped and everything else i mean my heart goes out to these people oh you know, yeah they've, they've invested time and effort and blood sweat and tears in its creative creativity and everything else it would be you know for us to relate not that this is on the same level by all by any means but it would be like we had recorded 10 episodes for facebook back a couple of years ago <laughs> like recorded them mm-hmm. all out yeah and did all of the work that went into it, all of the investment that we put into it. And then Facebook said, never mind. Mm-hmm. And, right. and Facebook has every right, would have had every right oh, yeah. as a business to do what they did. If they did that mm-hmm. to say, you know, we've gone in a different direction and that would be horrifying, right? That'd be terrifying. Yeah. Ter- yeah. We would be devastated mm-hmm. um, with that. And, so I feel bad for everybody involved. So, you know, when it comes to that, but at the same time, if you take a step back and you think about what's been happening with Warner Brothers, specifically as it relates to the DC um, properties, it's a big mess. It's, uh, you know, you've got the Arrowverse, you've got the official DCEU, you've got mm-hmm. the Snyderverse, you've got the Batman the, the Reeves verse. The Reeves verse. You've got what happened with like the the uh, the the, uh, the original Suicide Squad, and then mm-hmm. the Suicide Squad, and you've got you've just got cr- it's just a, been a hot mess. It's and, very true. And so, as much as I feel for everybody involved, I do. I do not revel in any of this happening to any of the people involved and any of the properties being mm-hmm. or can, projects being canceled. I think that the people that dis- discovery uh, when they took over Warner brothers and they got in there and they saw the dumpster fire that was behind the scenes. Mm-hmm. It's like that gif or that meme of the dude walking in with the pizza and just like everything. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. It, then that, that dude, it's, it's, it, it's Donald Glover. Yeah, no, well, yeah. yeah. He's walking in and it's just like, I mean, that's what I think that they walked into <laughs> and they had no clue what they were getting, really getting no. into. Yeah. And no. so I think that this is just finally, they like probably spent the last six months sitting around in boardrooms trying to figure out how to fix this. And yeah. then about a few months back, a couple months ago, somebody said, I I don't think we can yeah i think There's we just, just have no to deal way. with this yeah and we just have to like cut the arm off to save the body right and that's what they're doing right yeah now. i think that's what's having to happen but that's that's the situation covered now let's talk about the future and what this means this it is the means, exciting stuff. yeah it means the a ton for the future of dc um during an investor's call uh david i'm gonna butcher this last name i do not know lots of lots lots of Zazliv. Okay, whatever. I'm going to look it up, though. Just um, the CEO of Warner Brothers Discovery said this. He said, as we look at the opportunities that we have broadly, DC is at the top of the list for us. You look at Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, and Aquaman. These are brands that are known everywhere in the world, and the ability to drive those all over the world with great stories is a big opportunity 
for us. We have done a reset. We've restructured the business where we're going to focus, and there will be a team with a 10-year plan focusing just on DC. It's very similar to the structure that Alan Horn and Bob Iger put together very effectively with Kevin Feige at Disney. Um, first question, does this excite y'all? Absolutely. I mean, I, I think that's what we've all three been saying for a while now that DC needed to do is they needed to get a structured plan together with a cohesive story across all of their characters with a long term goal in mind. You know, they, they th- made one Superman movie and then they made a, um, Batman V Superman movie. And then they made wonder woman and Aquaman. And then they threw it all into justice league. Right. It was like super short. Aquaman was after Justice League. Okay. So I, I was, I, I was on the fence about that. But yeah, I mean, even then to even further to my point, they barely planned for a sort of Avengers level story and just happened. Right. And then you've got all the other stuff like we were saying. That's okay. That's very common though in the comics for DC. The Justice League getting thrown together, uh, pretty early on well, I'm is talking very common in, in movie form. If you look happened, at this happened in the DC animated universe, the second movie after Flashpoint Paradox was a Justice League team up mm. movie and it works. Well, I'm, I'm thinking, you know, look at the way Marvel does it. I right? understand. They yeah. they have a good number of movies setting up individual characters and then they bring them together for a story. Right. And it's very effective, as mm-hmm. as he said in, in the quote, Marvel's got an effective strategy. So I think the fact that if DC does that from now on where they think about it long term right they release lots of movies to where everything culminates into this big event type movie like all the avengers movies have been that can be really beneficial for dc and like they said they have really great brands like superman and batman and all that so if they capitalize on that they could be really successful i think that we have to be careful that we don't want necessarily have to have DC become the Marvel. No, I'm universe. not saying that it doesn't even have to follow the same pl- pattern or pro, you know, or, or, or formula yeah. of that. The key thing that needs to happen with DC is they need to have a plan they need to exactly. know what they want yeah. to do with the characters, where they want to go. They need to have some, they, the, the thing that, has made the MCU work that has been a challenge within Star Wars mm-hmm. and has been a complete train wreck within DC is Marvel Cinematic Universe has Kevin Feige. They have somebody that is the ultimate decision maker, the one that stands that steps in and says, this is where we are going and makes the decisions and the buck stops with Kevin Feige. Right. The challenge within the Star Wars universe is you had your films and then you had everything else. Everything else seemed from the impressions that we have as fans for some of the behind the scenes conversations that we've had with certain people that have have knowledge of the situation for during the movie era of the, the Disney movie era of Star Wars. Not that sounded weird. Disney movie of Star Wars. No, that's not what I mean. It's not like Disney channel. Yes. Yeah. Anyway, but you know what I'm talking about during the sequels and solo and rogue one, mm-hmm. there was the movie side and then everything else mm-hmm. and everything right. else had a coherent story. They were trying to work together. You had story group guiding it. And then you had movies and you, the struggle you saw with that was solo you know, the, the turmoil within solo with Lord Miller having to switch over to, to Ron Howard. You have even though Rogue One was, and I love Solo. Solo is a fantastic movie. If, mm-hmm. if Nathan for his birthday weekend said, let's watch Solo, I'd be like, turn it on. Let's go, baby. Buckle up, baby. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, like Lando Cowher yeah. says, but, uh, but there was problems on that, on that production. Rogue One is fantastic. Mm-hmm. One of the best Star Wars movies for sure of, of all time. There was turmoil within that when you have Gareth Edwards, he was going in one direction and then it didn't work and they bring in Tony Gilroy and he ends up basically reshooting a third of the movie or more and come and changing everything with it. That's going on. You have JJ Abrams going to Ryan Johnson. We all know the story there. And then the trouble with Colin Trevorrow and the challenge with that and then having to go back to JJ and that suffered as a result. What I think the reason that they have stepped back and said no more films right now, we are putting a pause on films. We don't know when the next Star Wars movie yeah. is releasing. 
The speculation was 2023 in December, but that doesn't look good to me right no. now. Yeah, that's not happening. Of that. There's no way. They are stepping back and fixing that problem within uh-huh. Lucasfilm. It's not as dramatic as with DC. Mm-mm. DC was a complete disaster. It was. And no coherence, no, no, no plan whatsoever and what discovery uh, has done now that they have taken over leadership of warner brothers is said we have to put this plan in place that's Mm -hmm. what they're doing yeah it's 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 very interesting and i mean we can kind of move on to the speculation for the future and what we hope to see due to batgirl being canceled we're not sure what else is going to get canceled or not, but we can speculate what the DC uh, future of DC will be like. Do you think we see any big things for DC in Black Adam or Shazam Fury of the Gods? And if so, what could work to make DC get back their status? Yeah, I mean, it's kind of it tough because both of those movies, while yes, they're in the DCEU, we think, or we were pretty sure that, I mean, yeah. Shazam yeah. for sure is. And Black right? Adam most likely. Yeah. But again, the fact that there's any sort of um, question is a part of the problem. Mm-hmm. You know, they need to, without a shadow of the of doubt, show us. Look, these are a part of whatever series of movies they decide to go yeah. with, right? And I think if they can establish, hey, this is a part of the DCEU where these movies are what has happened previously. That's good. And one more thing that they, one or both of them needs to do is set up something larger in the future, Mm -hmm. whether that's an overarching storyline where they introduce a big villain that might come up or they tease a new character that could be huge. Again, I'm not knowledgeable enough in DC. Maybe they they tease some sort of green lantern, right? Where they like bring in, they redo green lantern. That would be huge. I think fans would love that. I'd be excited for something like that. You know, something where they're able to tease a big, next step in the story mm-hmm. while also connecting these two movies to a previous larger story will help a lot it feels to me like they knew that this was I, I, they obviously knew yeah that this right. was coming before san diego comic-con before they released the shazam fury of the gods trailer that trailer right there when we watched it right after it was released right mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. during comic-con and we all watch it like together like we, a minute oh, yeah, after. Yeah, yeah. yeah we threw it up on the screen right and, and started watching it right the um the thing that stood out to me from that was suddenly you had Ben Affleck's Batman, you had Jason yep. Momoa's Aquaman, yep. you had Ezra Miller's Flash <laughs> yeah. in that story. We know that the Henry Cavill version of Superman has been tied to the story already. Mm-hmm. They reference Wonder Woman. They do in that trailer with that. It felt like that's strange. Mm-hmm. To do that. Then you have the question that was presented to Dwayne Johnson Mm -hmm. at the panel about uh, will Black Adam ever face Face, off or versus go against Superman? What was the specific way he answered that? I don't remember. It depends on who's playing. It depends on who's playing him. Yeah. I think that was basically it. Mm -hmm. That felt like a direct dig to Henry Cavill. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. There was all the the scuttlebutt going into San Diego Comic Con yeah. that Henry Cavill was going to show up at Hall H. Mm-hmm. It's very possible he was going to show up at Hall H because they were working out a contract yep. to try to get him back in to make that big mm-hmm. announcement. The contract didn't come together. He couldn't come. They weren't going to announce him with that. All of that seems to be going forward. I don't think that you get the Snyder verse proper going forward i don't think that's a good move no not now based on this but i do think that you've basically wiped the whole thing out take the best part of where we are in this story Mm -hmm. and rebuild with the same actors the same basic characters (laughs) yeah the hard part is going to be ezra miller yeah you know that's the biggest challenge and let's just be honest the movie that should be getting canceled is the flash yeah you know, if you're if you're dealing with like the one that deserves to be canceled, it's the Flash. But they've invested way too much of the money into it. They know the story. They know where it's going. That ain't going to get canceled. That sucks for you know that because because Ezra Miller is going down a path where he's just he's he, psycho. He, well, no, I don't want to use that in a negative term. But he's like he's. The guy needs help. Something's He's wrong. Off this is not a good move for DC, and it's going to be a disaster, I'm afraid, when he if he has to do press tours and stuff like Ugh. that. But 
they're going to end up releasing that movie yeah. uh, with it. You know, what could, what could we see? We could see uh, if they get the contract with Henry Cavill, mm-hmm. we could see a, a post credit scene in black Adam I where, be where he yeah. shows up. You could see some stuff in Shazam too that ties into the flash or into some of these other things mm-hmm. um, with it. it. The most logical transition would be black Adam somehow tying into Shazam too and bringing in a new character or bringing in one of the classic characters and then Shazam two tying into flash and making it the big, which yeah. is a very MCU thing to do yeah. Oh yeah. Um, with that. And then them resetting and doing this. This is also the week, the week after San Diego Comic Con suddenly Ben Affleck is uh, is on the yeah. set doing reshoots of Aquaman right. too. So there's this is not something that just happened where they're like the whole thing about Warner Brothers canceled Batgirl in order to take a tax write off is so twisted and misrepresented. They're gonna take the tax write off, no doubt whatsoever. This is so much bigger than that. Yeah, it is. And like you were saying, the Flash is definitely the most difficult topic for for what's going on right now due to it should have been canceled because of everything going on so what do you think we could see in the flash that is so important that they are really pushing it to be released besides you know money well i think part of it is they i mean it's an interesting story it's it's based off of the flashpoint story right Mm. you know and you've got michael keaton's batman coming back which is huge and they can't cancel michael keaton out of two movies no they can't do that but you also have this new supergirl that's been rumored to have been canceled as well yeah i mean in the movie but that's that's a lot less step back he that's been rumored to be canceled it's not canceled no and the the biggest thing about that is what are they going to do with that character going forward? Mm-hmm. They can make that character a compelling character. It, it very much so. Mm-hmm. And so tie, create a great storyline around that character, make it multiverse tied in or something like mm-hmm. that. And let that be part of the DCEU with Henry Cavill and Ben Affleck and Jason Momoa and Gal Gadot and some version of Flash, <laughs> um, and, you know, and, and Zachary uh, Levi and Dwayne Johnson. I mean, think about the star power. Yeah, they have a that lot. They have there. Bring in somebody to guide it. Get some good, coherent storytelling done. Calm down on the drama on the re- on the releases of these things. Mm-hmm. Let the filmmakers make the movies and go forward. Yeah, I agree. That's what they do next. I think it's. I've, I've probably said about fifteen different dad moments that weren't official. <laughs> but let's go ahead and do a dad moment. I am your father. So when the initial wave of information started to hit social media last week, um, it's, it did. It seemed as if some crazy decisions uh, were being made by the new leadership of Warner Brothers Discovery. But the more the information started to come out, um, the more it seemed that something very different was taking shape. There were lots of conflicting reports and opinions going around, but something just seemed off. And so we were talking about it and we sat down and kind of concluded pretty early on that it felt like WBD was sort of burning the house down in order to rebuild it again and that we needed to wait and see what was really going on and then as the earnings call happened and things it seems like that's exactly what that was all about there's an ancient proverb that says the one who states his case first seems right until the other comes and examines him so as we should do with any of these rumors or any of these things as they're happening in real time, we need to take a t- uh, some time to step back, consider that there's more going on than we may be able to see, and then wait for all sides to speak up. And that's the wise way to handle most situations, even when it comes to the DCEU. Yep. Mm-hmm. So. Yes. And as a DC fan, I am excited for the future. I was actually thinking last night about how cool it would be if in 10 years I walked into a DC movie with the same hype I felt with Endgame. Yeah. But it's definitely an uncertain time as a DC fan, but very exciting. Very, very cool. Good job, BB Nate. Good segment. It was a a hard segment to navigate, and you did a great (laughs) job in helping me navigate it. So (laughs) thank you. All right. So um, last week, I, I tricked the Suns on, is it canon? Can I make it two weeks in a row? Let's find out. This is not going to go the way you think. All right. Again, here's how this segment works. Um, I give a description of something I found on Wikipedia, and then you guys make an argument for whether you think it's canon or legends and why. Did you use the random article button again? I did. Until, yeah. I mean, I had to click it a few times to Just find something that, that wasn't, wasn't like, like an author or, <laughs> you know, a crew. Something obvious. Or something like yeah. That. Yeah. Or, yeah. 
And one was like Bounty Hunters issue 28, you know, <laughs> Woo. we know that. Right. OK. Um, so anyway, um, okay. here we go. The Rigel system. Uh, this Rigel system was a star system of the Chiss ascendancy in the unknown regions. It was the home to a star orbited by the planet Rigar a stronghold of the Clar family and the location of their homestead, as well as the asteroid field known as the junkyard canon or legends. I'll start with you, BB Nate. I don't know enough about Thrawn's canon books to say that I'm, I'm an expert. I only have read the first two in the first trilogy that came out. I haven't even read Thrawn ascendancy, any of them. Um, but I feel like this is way too, I feel like it's a bait. I feel like you're wanting me to think it's canon <laughs> because it's, it's like, Oh, it's Thrawn. There's a, there's a, the Thrawn ascendancy book. So it's, it feels like it would work. But then again, I'm not a hundred percent sure, <laughs> but the thing, I don't know. I, I, I don't think so. Okay. Well, what do you think, Sam? I'm going to say it is canon and it is tough. I'm just kind of flipping a coin, but I guess my mindset on it would be, yeah, there's the whole heir to the empire storyline that happens where Thrawn was introduced and all that. But those stories don't follow Thrawn himself, right? It, it follows. May they do Thrawn, follow Thrawn. Well, a lot. yeah, but it's about Luke and Han and Leia, and they're the main characters of the story. Thrawn just happens to be the villain. You no, know, Thrawn is the ultimate bad guy in that. No, story. I understand okay, that, okay. but so is Darth Vader and the Emperor in yeah, okay. in Star Wars. Okay. I think in, you know, this is a, a detail that would be more suited to be revealed for a main character such as Thrawn in his own titular books. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to guess canon. You're going to guess it is, it's canon? I'm guessing canon. And you're going to guess? Legends, yeah. Legends. Because, because, I mean, going back, Heir to the Empire... I listened to a lot of the first book in audiobook form, and there is so much unnecessary stuff in that book <laughs> about the characters. Oh, no, I just you're right. feel like this could be. I mean, that's a why thing. I was saying it's kind of a flip of a coin. But so I'm I feel like saying. this could be a legend because there's so much in Heir to the Empire that it would work. Yeah, so that's fair. The, the whole trilogy right. of books. Here's what's fun about this. You are both right and you are both wrong. <laughs> and what's funny is this was our first split decision too. Uh, with it, it originally was uh, created in Legends, Star Wars, the Essential Atlas Online Companion on StarWars.com. So it wasn't even as well books. as Star Wars Gamer Icon um, and Essential Atlas and things like that. And then it was fully integrated into the story in Thrawn Ascendancy, Lesser Evil, um, with its first appearance. Um, simultaneous in the audiobook. So, so I was right. You were both right. I was I was first right though. But it wasn't in Heir to the Empire or any of those books. <laughs> I though. didn't say it had to be in Heir to the oh, Empire. Yeah, yeah that's I just got lucky. <laughs> it was interesting because that one came up and I looked and I was like, it was one of those tabs on Wikipedia that has canon and legends. Uh-huh. And I'm like, ooh, I hope I can make this work. Because that'll be <laughs> fun um, with it. All right. Cool. Very cool. It's kind of, this is a fun segment. Yeah, I like it. Because it helps us talk about stuff that we would normally yeah. have a conversation Right, and gets about. us thinking and stuff. Yeah. All right. So why don't we talk about something we should have talked about weeks ago, but we haven't had a chance ago. to yet. So. Yeah. Um, we, you know, like you said, we haven't talked Miss Marvel much at all since the series has been running or whatever, but the finale dropped one line at the end there that could change the future of the MCU. Uh, we'll talk about the implications of this and we'll give our theories as to where Marvel could go from here. Be on your guard. There are older and fouler things than orcs in the deep places of the world. All right, then. Keep your secrets. You're coming to us. Yes, as the footsteps of steel and steel. There are many magic rings in this world, Bilbo Baggins, and none of them should be used lightly. chance to talk about this series since it ended um i want to get y'all's uh just overall opinion okay. on the series this is now that it's uh it's concluded nate you go first i go first why yes. why does the dad go first uh, it's because your birthday you but i don't want to go for okay <laughs> no Happy I, birthday. I honestly go first. i really enjoyed it i feel like 
it was dragging a lot in the first three episodes and that's where we dropped off because we just kind of lost faith i mean that's halfway not through lost this. faith we just got super swamped yeah with and, and also that's, half, yeah. that's halfway through the season and nothing really happened yeah. at that point but from then on it did get really good and i did like the ending and i like the the entire show it was a lot of fun and mm-hmm. that's it it definitely exceeded my expectations as I was going into it. I was expecting different going into it, and I I came out enjoying what I saw. So, Dad, Dad, I uh, we said it from the very beginning of the show because we did some episodes early on. Uh, we talked a little bit about mm-hmm. it, uh, early on. I was this show was not. We were not the demographic that this show was created for. We mm-hmm. are not people living in big cities with you know high school you know, drama life, you know, that kind of thing that goes on uh, with it. It just wasn't our demographic. And so it was harder for us to get into as a result. Plus they were taking lo- too long, I think, to develop who the bad guy Agreed. was. The, the yeah. antagonist was a challenge. We talked about that too. But once they got all of that set up and we knew who the bad guys were, that last half of this series was fantastic. Yeah, it was I really enjoyed good. it a lot. What did you think, Sam? Yeah, I mean, I think it definitely was a a, a pleasant surprise at the end. You know, we, I was pretty apprehensive going into it. Even from the trailers, I was I was pretty iffy, and and we were all on the same page at the beginning. It was kind of like okay, you know, it, it's it's fine. But at the end, she became a really interesting uh, character. I think even though the powers are different than the comics, I really like them. I think they are cool. I think she'll be a great addition to the MCU going yeah, forward. I agreed. So yeah, I'm excited for it. But um, getting to today's topic, the line that has everybody talking is um, Bruno is talking to to Kamala and he's like, the reason why you have these powers is you have this certain mutation, right? He says mutation and then a little snippet of the X-Men oh, 90s theme yeah, play. That was when it was right. like we perked up right. big time. And <laughs> then they move on from it and they don't say another word and it's just like, you just kind of leaves you like wanting more. But this is important because this sets up they they're bringing more and more mutant stuff little references to mutant stuff here and there so if marvel decides to start bringing in the x-men or the mutants storyline and stuff where do you think they bring this in what upcoming projects or characters could they use to bring this new concept this concept of mutants into the mcu in the future nate i don't know that's a difficult place. I think that we could maybe see something in She-Hulk just that could start it, judging how she's a, a superhero lawyer um, in and of itself. And that could start the whole mutate mutant cases that come out oh, of yeah. that and all that stuff. But um, Namor, definitely a big one. Um, yeah. From Wakanda Forever. I looked that up. Uh, I wasn't sure if he was just an Atlantean or something, no. but he is a mutant. So he is he's, a mutation. He's considered yes. a mutant in the comics. Okay. Yeah. yeah. He, he is a mutant. Um, so that's a big so, deal. So there he is. Yeah. I mean, that's where it's happening then. It's just all a matter of do they explicitly say in the movie he's a mutant? Yeah. Because if so, that is our first. Mm-hmm. X-Men. I do think that the natural place for them to take this thing forward is in the in the Marvel's movie. I'm trying to remember where, it's been delayed, I know, but uh, it's I think to 2023 or 4. It's in 2023, yeah. I'm pretty sure, but I'm not sure when in 2023. Yeah, I can't remember the end of it, I think. But, you know, since if they're going to make uh Kamala mm-hmm. um that a mutation, mm-hmm. uh and that's where they're going with it, then you could be bringing in some mutants into that mm-hmm. as well. Interesting. So. Okay. But do you think that this is an indication that we'll be seeing the X-Men and familiar faces that we've grown to know yeah. from the stories? So you think we're oh, going to sure. get those characters coming up in the future? Mm-hmm. When do you think they would bring that in? Because Marvel's Pre- full right now. They've got a busy schedule. So what, what do you think Mania has a very high likelihood of bringing them in. Um, if that feels like a big mm. movie for the next, because that's starting out phase five. Um, maybe Secret Invasion it could possibly happen in that. Um, I don't know. It's, what, it's, do you, what do you think they're going to do with the new X-Men animated series that's coming out? Um, do I don't think- know. Maybe they could tell stories for the characters that are coming up because this is the X-Men 97 show. 
um, that's what this, it's titled. The new one is taking place right as right after the regular show, mm-hmm. the original show. It's picking right up. So who knows? It's probably just like Spider Man Freshman Year as another um, Earth, but it's going to be very cool to see that. But it is a little telling how they used the theme in this, right? In and this they episode. used it when Professor X came out in Multiverse mm-hmm. of Madness. So too. I don't know. We'll see something. I feel like. Also, I feel like Deadpool three is a fantastic place to get that started that's where it's confirmed? gonna probably well, yeah he's filming it right now he, he oh, posted stuff from i it, thought that so. was a rumor no 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 it's he, kevin Feige said that he wanted it to be based uh as big as civil war and ragnarok wow um for this stuff how did so, i miss that i totally missed that news cycle i am completely over my lost in Warner Brothers. Yeah, girlfriend <laughs> um <laughs> so i would say this i think the most natural way for them to bring this in is Loki because Loki directly mm, is variance. dealing with multiverses um, now. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so you've got this multiverse thing happening. They teased it in obviously in Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. They brought the multiverses in on that. Anything that's multiverse driven uh, is going to open up the door for a completely that's different the universe. Big deal with Quantumania then. Yeah. Because that deals with the multiverse. Right. And it's Kang. Right. And Kang and timelines. I feel like that's a stuff. great place to... So you Loki, introduce, you and then close out phase four with Ant-Man and Wasp Quantumania, which is what they said they're doing. No, they're, no, they're starting they're, they're phase They're starting five. phase five with Quantumania, so that'd be a great place to introduce the X-Men. Well, I think that you may see that get more introduced in Loki season two and then and then fully Possibly. brought in in, in Quantumania. Yeah. yeah, I think that's Loki fair. season two's after. I don't know when things are anymore. <laughs> I've slept since then. <laughs> So, well, you're, regardless, those two uh, yeah, things could absolutely. could set it up. But now, th- this poses an interesting question, though, because in the comics, it's well known that uh, Kamala Khan gets her powers from the Terrigen Mist and makes her become an Inhuman, right? And in the comics, the Inhumans and the X Men are kind of at odds with each other. The inhu- Inhumans are like, "No, we don't want to be considered mutants," but some, lo- sometimes because larger- they're sort of artificially created. Yeah, mutants. but sometimes the larger population says, "Well, you're basically you've got mutated genes, so you're a mutant." So it's this kind of like. Mm-hmm. But I mean, in the articles that I uh, you sent me in and that I read for this series, the X Men's been used for pretty interesting storylines, um, and and very, I guess, kind of political storylines if you if you think about it. I mean, the the whole like uh, in the original, we watched the original X Men movie a few months ago, and I forgot how like complex the story is in the whole. It's really complex, you know, and political. Yes, and yeah. Deep. So yeah. X Men's always been used for that, and the whole. In humans versus X Men, yeah, where it's like, tension yeah, it's and, like you can't just all lump yeah. us all together because we're different. You know, it's a really interesting storyline, but it seems like they're kind of cutting that out by saying Kamala's a mutant. No, I think they actually could be bringing that in mm-hmm. because so? because the Terrigen mist, mist or whatever created that mm-hmm. could. Well, no, but uh, it's hard because it's genetic, right? In in my Miss Marvel. Well, and, and it is in the comics, at least, I think, I'm pretty sure that's what I remember reading. It's just, instead of being born with mutated genes like a mutant, the Terrigen Mist mutates your genes and you gain powers as a but result in, but of But in Miss Marvel, it was his grand her grandmother had the... Right. Mm. So I think she would be considered more of a mutant. Yes. Because she's just she was born with these different set of yeah it is it is interesting that they're, how they're going to do that you know they the comic books allow for really that's one of the things that BB Nate likes so much about comic books mm-hmm. is it allows for you to like do long form storytelling that mm-hmm. takes place over multiple months multiple years multiple storylines multiple properties mm-hmm. and you don't get that as much in two hour two and a half hour movies yeah. uh, three times a year four times a year and with some series thrown in it's just mm-hmm. not as easy to do it mm-hmm. and so I think that they're gonna that it'll be interesting to see how they they move that yeah forward. I heard a or I read a theory someone had of how they could handle this and they were almost saying they could just use in the mcu what they could do is they could just use the terms interchangeably where an inhuman and a mutant are basically the same thing you just use the terms differently but i don't think that's a good idea just because they're too so they're so different in the comics and it takes away one of the main like conflicts that they can have i feel like it would cheapen the storyline if they decided to go that route yeah i think you're right and that's why i'm saying it's going to be an interesting thing to see how they handle it yeah i mean so 
does that mean that they're cutting out the Inhuman show? Yes. Was it <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, the question I think is they have, yeah, yeah, they but have to. How do they handle Black Bolt? You they know, just because have his actor. I don't variant. think that that's it's a, a problem. It's a, it's a yeah. variant. Well, I'm There's not. No problem. There. Yeah, that's that's fine. The actor's fine, but how do they handle his character? Because he is. You make him not an Inhuman, and that's a big deal. No, he, he's he's the leader inhuman. of the Inhuman. They'll keep him in Inhuman. He might be the one to introduce it. But I, I mean, there's there's not really much that's complicated with that character to bring him in. You just bring him in, and then you can create Inhumans off of that because he is such an important deal to the Inhumans. So I don't. I feel like there isn't much complication with that character. Mm-hmm. I just want to see Lockjaw, <laughs> <laughs> the te- giant teleporting bulldog. Yep. Yeah. Um. So now that there's this this story you know or this this concept right that the bangle or whatever could have activated um kamala's genes or whatever right that's kind of where where the mindset is that she's a mutant and just activated her genes do they go back and retcon certain characters in the mcu to say that they were mutants all along for instance quicksilver and scarlet witch you know they they were in these certain like notes or whatever that you found, um, it was an in universe like kind of extra, you know, book or whatever. The the scientists in Sokovia or were interested in that area because lots of people had certain genetic traits that were interesting. Interesting, I didn't realize that. So that's partially why they picked Wanda and Pietro. So I mean, could which this- by the way, uh, Aaron Taylor Johnson is fantastic in Bullet Train. Oh yes. my gosh! Yeah, he was one of the standout characters for sure. Tangerine. <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah we have to this is possible because mutants are a thing um even if you watch the original x-men movie mutants have been the thing for a long time right but they didn't start developing powers until pretty recently before that because the start powers started to get noticed and more and more and more later and while some people had them some genes were kind of suppressed and dormant dormant until later on like rogue take rogue for example she didn't Mm, start to get them until she was 16 or 17 um so it's it's very possible that these powers just could have been awoken from uh infinity stone or experiment or something like that i think that you know the the snap could have been i know that's one theory that's been that, out for we a while. threw around that theory the long snap time ago, could have, yeah. you know people coming back in that could have the, the the amount of energy required to obliterate half of the of all life in the galaxy in the universe mm-hmm. and then bring that back could mm-hmm. easily have begun to trigger genes of in course people. yeah well, so. that's a good point do you think if they go this route and they explain that these characters that we had seen previously have always been mutants and that their just powers are activated by this stuff, do you think that cheapens the story of these characters and or mutants in general? I don't. I think that would make it more interesting. Go back and watch like, okay, these people had powers all along that they just couldn't access them. I think it would make it interesting for the characters later on, too. You could take... um I don't remember her name. Photon, for an example. Oh, yeah. Monica Rambeau. Yeah. She could be a mutant. But Mm -hmm. her passing through the barrier activated her genes. It's a very possible thing. Um, She could be technically an inhuman due to the barrier. That was an experiment that caused her to become an inhuman. Um, So there's a lot that can happen here. That's why I said Secret Invasion could be a good one to introduce. Yeah, that's true. I think Bruno is a high school student that's really, really smart, but we need to be very careful about like creating an entire Marvel. (laughs) That's a good point. That's a good point. Um, of this is how the, the the mutants and the inhumans work off of a, a throwaway statement and some music well, at the end of an episode from a high school student. Music is yeah, big. but I I think the fact that they decided to put in that theme is significant. You don't put that oh, in no, there without a doubt. She he said mutant. They played that music. It matters, mm. but that doesn't mean that he's r- right about the assumptions that we're making what he said. Yeah, no. me, me. That's fair. They could be kind of doing a, a little misleading oh. with it. Yeah. Oh, wait, Marvel, Kevin, well, Feige, no, you're right. You, yeah. Doing any kind of misdirection. No, that's no, it's never not like happened. they did that with Quicksilver in the WandaVision show. Still salty about oh, that. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. They need to retcon that if they're going to retcon <laughs> anything. Right. So, but, um, you know, with the future of Marvel looking pretty full, it's tough to see <laughs> where they could bring in the mutants in the near future. But, all signs point to a strong possibility of seeing some of our favorite characters show up very soon. Absolutely. Good segment. Good Thank segment. You. Good job. Appreciate it. You, you catch your breath, BB Nate? Mm-hmm. You ready to do another segment? Mm-hmm. Here we go. Let's go.
This weekend uh, sucks for new movie releases. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, coming up. And there weren't any great trailers uh, before we recorded either. Uh, so it's a good thing E.T. is going to be back in the theaters. I want a chance to watch that. BB Nate will uh, BB Nate. I typed it wrong. It's BB Bait. BB Bait. BB Bait. BB Bait. Um, Man, we could have used that for our clickbait segment or something. BB Bait. Clickbait with BB Bait. Oh, jeez. Missed opportunities. Yeah. Well, anyway, he's going to talk all about it next on Movie Moments. At last, we will reveal ourselves to the Jedi. At last, we will have revenge. This one is a no. Uh, <laughs> I don't think I can. Don't even it. tell us what the movie is. You're just like no, no. Uh, it's a fall, and uh, Sammy, I know, can't handle this. Uh, it is about oh, no. best friends Becky and Hunter find themselves at the top of a two thousand foot how, radio tower. How do you find yourself? I don't at the know. Top? I haven't watched the trailer specifically because I don't think I can handle it. But <laughs> you um, don't just show up at the top of a two thousand foot tall tower. It yeah, doesn't just it, happen. The, the director is is Scott Mann. And the cast is Grace Caroline Curry, uh, Virginia Gardner, and Jeffrey Dean Morgan. Hey, it's it's Batman's daddy. Um, <laughs> studio is Lionsgate. It is rated PG-13 for bloody images, intense peril, and strong language. Uh, going yes or no. Nah. I don't think I can handle it, but in some ways I'm intrigued by it. I'm intrigued I'm like, by okay, it. It's nope. an interesting concept. Nope. Mm-hmm. Um, I just don't think that I could. It's like gravity, know. but on yeah, a it's, tall it's, tower. Yeah, with, with gravity. It's gravity. <laughs> it's without, gravity with, with, with actual gravity. gravity um, yeah. Yeah, um, this, Gravity. this next one, bodies, Sorry. bodies, bodies, yeah, bodies, three original times. and very creative title. Um, when a group of rich, oh, 20s- I just want to say this: the fir- the one before this, that's not the horror movie. Before we started in, Nate's like, no, this one is the horror movie, and he didn't do that with this one. No, so. um, when a group of rich twenty-somethings plan a hurricane party at a remote family what? mansion, hurricane a party, party game, while hurricanes going on, and just kind of yeah. wait it out yeah. together. That's an actual thing. Oh, big time. Oh, yeah, huge. Um, I mean, a party I guess game. It's the whole like eat, drink, and be merry. Concept. Tomorrow you may die. Yeah. So. Uh-huh. Well, a uh, party game goes awry in this fresh and funny look at backstabbing fake friends and one party gone very So you're very telling wrong. me they were playing like apples to apples mm-hmm. and, and just got a little, bit, the playing, a little bit so. too. Not sure that's the game. Um, <laughs> the director is Helena Red, Rain, Regine? Re, Re, Rain, 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 whatever it is. Cast is uh, Amanda. Um, I spelt um, it wrong. Amanda Stenberg. Okay. <laughs> Maria <laughs> Baklava. And Rachel Sennett, uh, studio is A24, makes sense. Um, it is rated R for violence, bloody images, drug use, sexual references, pervasive language. Going, no. No, um, we're not going, but no, this no, is not, not our, like not said, our not weekend sucks, but we are going to go see, uh, in a e. couple of days, we're yeah. going to go see E.T. in IMAX. BB Nate for the has first time. never had the chance to finish, finish E.T. Mm-hmm. E.T. And we did last go to the movies a couple of times this week. So what did we, we did. see? We've seen three movies since we recorded last, didn't we? We did. We saw, we the, saw min- minions. the Minions Rise of yep. Gru, mm-hmm. uh, under just one, like very one sentence. Yeah, it was about what I expected. It was fun. It was fun. I enjoyed yeah. it. Yeah, I mean, it, it's a minion. It was movie. a minions movie. Um, yeah. League of DC Super League of Super Pets. BB Nate. Very surprised. Really enjoyed it. That was really good. Yeah, same. I mean, I went into it with mediocre expectations, and it well exceeded them. It was honestly just a lot of fun. There was a scene that something happened. <laughs> I laughed, got so tickled. We all I did. could I had church laughs for about 10 minutes. I just kept all three of all us. Cr- I was crying. It was really good. It was it was really it good. Was worth really a watch. Good. If Absolutely. you've got time, go down to the theater. And, and watch then it. last night we saw Bullet Train. Mm-hmm. Yep. Nate, this is the one you were like really excited about. <laughs> yeah. So tell us what you thought about I it. I thought it was a great movie. I enjoyed every second of it. I thought that the story was surprisingly well thought out and fun. Yeah. The characters well fleshed out. I enjoyed every single character and I thought yeah. they were all great. I thought that the, the action sequences, while very violent, unbelievably gory. Yeah. They're pretty fun. Were <laughs> really well done action sequences, especially the final fight scenes at the end with the elder was it really was well done, but it was violent. Very. Bloody. Anyway, Sam. <laughs> yeah, I thought, I mean, it was, it was what you were expecting to get from the trailer. Mm-hmm. It was funny. It was action packed. It had that weird, almost fourth wall ish breaking kind of humor. 
you know, it was it was fun. It was entertaining for a couple hours. And, you know, if they decided to to make more in a series with this universe and some of these characters, I'd go back and watch them. I would say that this was more than what I expected from the trailers. I mm-hmm. everything that I expected in the trailers, the fun, the weird, the, you know, battles, uh, uh, fight sequences that were like choreographed and beautiful in the way that they were choreographed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The, you know, the great, you know, f- you know, Brad Pitt being Brad Pitt. Oh, his character <laughs> um, was so much fun. On this, all of that, everything I expected. The characters and the storyline were so much better. It mm-hmm. worked. That's true. You just, you know, I've seen the critics' reviews, and my gut, just pulling back the curtain a little bit here, of I'm almost certain that most reviewers of this movie are getting screeners. Really? Yeah. And so this is not the kind of movie you can really watch while you're working on something else or sitting at home on your phone. You have to be in there. Every there's nuance. There's you got to let things. It's so much fun. It was so much fun. Very fun. If disclaimer, you can handle the fact that this is probably one of the most violent movies I've ever seen in my life. Not true. Not true. Not even close to true. What? I can give you one more. Hacksaw That's Ridge? Been, yes. Okay. That is, okay. That is of Hacksaw confirmed Ridge. to be the most violent movie okay. in the past decade. Outside of Hacksaw Ridge, the most violent movie that I've ever seen in my life, and about 90 F-bombs. <laughs> yeah, it's a, and lot. a lot more. If more than that. Okay, and more more words than that, but 90 F-bombs. So was, if yeah. you can deal with that and mm-hmm. you're going to eat like you can handle that, Bullet Train is a fun movie. Yeah. yeah. It was okay. a lot of fun. All right. Uh, for trailers ish, we got one kind of trailer. It was, more of a, it was, it was like a teaser like a for teaser. a teaser almost. Like, yeah, I'm waiting for something else. Um, uh, Joker, I'm going to try to do this justice. It's French. Folly à deux or something. I don't know. It, it translates Folly to madness adieu. for two. Yeah. Um, madness is, for two? Is yes. Uh-huh. Um, is what it translates to. Wait, folly. Oh, that's yeah. right. Um, so I don't know. Okay. I'm not sure. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean,. It's a musical, which is yeah. Tristan and I were talking about that. He texted. I me. actually am really intrigued by this. I'm intrigued as we talked know. about this. You've got Lady Gaga, who's an amazing actress and amazing singer. So I'm totally cool with that. You got Joaquin, Joaquin Phoenix, Phoenix who's an amazing actor. Nailed Don't know about his character. <laughs> nailed this. He doesn't oh, have yeah. to be a good singer. He could just be crazy. Okay. You've got Michael Uslan sharing it. That which I have all the respect in the world for Michael Uslan yeah. when it comes to him endorsing anything DC related. Point. Exactly. Um. And the kind con- the concept that we talked about of this being set primarily at Arkham mm-hmm. and and Lady Gaga playing Harley Quinn and Harley Quinn being his psychiatrist and her getting twisted by him through that yeah. process. That is a really intriguing thing. If the madness piece, if the musical elements of this is exploring his madness, yeah, that could be really interesting. Yeah. I mean, we're getting that new um that new Spotify podcast telling the story of Joker and Harley Quinn yeah. from the point of view of Harley and Quinzel before she as a psychiatrist. Yeah. Is that so set sure, in this universe? No, no, no but it's just still, it's a one, cool but it'll give us yeah. a little hmm. bit of a, an indication um, for box office predictions. Cause we're recording this early. Um, Bull train 32 million domestic. That's it's fine. I don't think it was that for an high movie. That's not movie. terrible. Um, I don't think it was that high budget as well. Um, but DC league of super pets, 12 million domestic and Nope, 10 million. So it's not terrible. Uh, DC League of Super Pets is actually still doing better than I thought it would be, and it's this weekend. But um, I don't know. I think it was good. We'll okay. Yeah. All right. Good job. Um, you done? Thanks. Yeah. Star Wars fans woke up. Uh, we could go very excited to get the full trailer for the new Andor series. But the biggest surprise in the trailer came at the very end. <sighs> Patience. <laughs> Pokey religions and ancient weapons are no match for a good blaster at your side, kid. Rebellions are built on hope. The force is with me, and I am with the Force. If you live long enough, you see the same eyes in different people. Oh my gosh! I've been. And? I have comments. <laughs> I know you bought like, like a five thousand dollars worth or something yesterday. It felt like it was like a stack, wasn't it's like it? Thirty, thirty dollars. It feels like well, you know, in comic money, that's mm-hmm. a lot of comics. That's that's. Um, I think I had comics? like six, six, seven comics. Good. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so I finished uh, Shadow of the Sith. Any good? It's good. 
It makes me want to watch Rise of Skywalker. Yeah, I had a feeling oh, it would. It's good. I, I, yeah, I'm going to get there eventually. <laughs> yeah, that's good. All right. Well, and I haven't even picked it up. Uh, well, I mean, there's a hard copy version of it sitting in the other room. So. Um, <laughs> all right. Uh, let's talk about this Andor trailer. The first thing, before we kind of dive into a recap mm-hmm. of, of everything going on. I left a whole segment in here that yep. was from before, wasn't it? Okay, yeah. good. All right, and I was totally confused. Um, <laughs> all right, uh, what did you think about the trailer? Let's start with you, BB Nate. Terrible. No, stop oh, it. Gosh, I hated it every yeah. every second. It was just weird. No, honestly, the one thing that stood out to me, uh, uh, let alone from the excitement of this show coming out, is how absolutely visually stunning and the cinematography in this show is probably the best we've gotten out of Star Wars. There are so many it's moments good. that just feel so cinematic. I know I just said that's the right word, but it is just the only way to describe it is cinematic. And I mean, just from the first shot of the trailer, you just feel it. I mean, you yeah. feel the you feel what that's, they're wanting you to it feel. Just feels Star big. Destroyer. You, you feel overhead. it feels big. You also just feel this. It's gloomy. It's gray. It's it's dark. You can tell yeah. these people are mm-hmm. intimidated and just terrified. And you, you feel get the that. weight of the empire. Out any dialogue you could just see it and it's beautiful and then the final shot in the trailer where that that giant yeah. battle is crashing it looks like something from force unleashed it was so cool i'm so yeah. excited it's gonna right. be so yeah. good yeah Shmooly. i think it looks awesome i think you know visuals aside the story looks so interesting it's something we haven't we got a little bit of in rogue one but rogue one was more of a war film this is your political um espionage yeah story. political side of things you got your spy stuff you got rebellion and, and this insurgency with within the empire and things like that it's got such, such a, an intriguing storyline and we're gonna see concepts that we haven't gotten enough of in star wars yet and i think having the guy who worked on the born movies is perfect for the andor side of things obviously andor is going to be the more spy side but you've got the whole mon mothma stuff which you know i'll be honest i was on the fence about i'm like i'm not sure i'll get into that just because it's politics you know but it looks really really interesting i think it's going to be great yeah i love the trailer i think it's fantastic i think that you get a real feel for how um oppressed the galaxy is yeah under this, the smugness of the Empire, those two officers, what? just smugness. Smugness. I heard spudness. Smugness. That makes more sense. Um, you're drinking that, the calf and just kind of looking down their noses. You've got a lot of Imperial Security Bureau ISB, mm. uh, with the white coats, yeah. uh, on this. And so that creates a whole new story. That's, I mean, those haven't been portrayed in live action at all, really, except Not for much, outside, yeah. outside of Krennic. Right. Um, with this, which by the way, there's there's the real legitimate possibility oh, gonna yeah. be that we yeah. get some Krennic in this. That's true. Point. You think we get any more D.H. Tarkin maybe a little bit too? I You know, I don't know. I do know this. Our good friend, not really good friend, we love him, but great <laughs> friend. He, think he, I think he will still remember us, but you hear him every single week as we end our episode with uh, <laughs> his, uh, his Ben Kenobi uh, wishing you, may the force be with you. But Stephen Stanton is tweeting that stuff about this constantly, which leads me to believe that General Radis is going to be a part oh, of this story. That'd be so point, cool. Um, with it, which I'm excited about it. All love right. It. Let's talk a little bit about um, some of the big takeaways. First one, obviously, is that uh, you know, Andor's delayed. It was supposed to come yeah. out August 31st. We woke up to get ready to see these trailers and everything else and thinking we were in the month of Andor. They were calling it Andor August. And suddenly it was like, what are we calling it now? And so it's like <laughs> Cassie in September or September or something, you know, with this <laughs> delayed, know work. delayed till September 21st, but it will release with three episodes instead of two episodes. Now, the I mean, spe- <laughs> uh, speculation about it's literally it's like i feel like we need to take out of school like you're sick and i'm gonna take off of work <laughs> and we're just gonna watch three episodes of this i'm not kidding um anyway. watch three episodes of it and then watch those three episodes again 
again and then maybe watch Rogue One. Um, here's what was happening with the schedule of this. It looks like it was going to be going up directly against some She-Hulk stuff. Now they've changed the date of the re- the uh, day of the week that She-Hulk is released on. Now. Yeah, it's Thursdays. They've now, delayed right? it to Thursdays now, which is different. Um, but it's going up against the new HBO series, um, the prequel for Game, Game of Thrones, Thrones House, House of Dragon, Dragon, and the Lord of the Rings: Rings of Power um, on. Um, Amazon Prime. So yep. do you guys think that this is why this was delayed? We'll start with you, Sam. Yeah, absolutely. I think that it makes the most sense. They they want this series to do the best it can. And while I'm sure they're not really all that worried about it going up against something that's their own IP, like She-Hulk, the fact that there's two other major series running at that time would heavily draw from it. At least for, I mean, it would for us. Rings of Power is something we're definitely going to have absolutely. to watch. And then with, for sure. you know, that's, so and that's we're going to con- watch She-Hulk too. Yeah, we're, well, I, especially absolutely. Now. <laughs> especially with, uh, yeah, with uh, Matt Murdock in it. Right, yeah. but us watching Rings of Power draws from Disney's money. You know, it's not giving right. money to them. So they don't want that. So I definitely think that that makes sense as to why they would delay it. And they gave us more by saying, here, you get three episodes now, yeah. you know, a 12 so episode it's, season. it's, it's kind of America. like a quarter of the season. Right. I can't I can't be all that sad. They gave us more. It sure it bums me out that we're going to wait a little longer, but we've got so much stuff before then. In the meantime, we definitely yeah. do. I, I do think this is part of the reason why it was delayed. I couldn't think of anything else. We of why it could be i don't think there's any unless there's like production issues yeah but i don't I, I don't know it's too close for there really to be production issues it would have to be starting to roll out now mm-hmm. and i don't think yeah, well, people have already seen for the first four episodes yeah so screeners have gone out mm-hmm. so right. I, I think that oh, yeah. i think it's just because they were worried about all the competition i think that they are really scared about rings of power and they should be people are excited for it smart people are well excited and for people it. are gonna be scared <laughs> of house of dragon oh house yeah, of the dragon is gonna be true. big too um, with it now the the converse side of this though the other end of this is that it now is in a lot of conflict with the bad batch season two it's going to be running up li- right alongside on that's this. some good do star you, stuff though yeah do you guys think that the bad batch season two is going to get delayed now no i don't see reason really i think the Android's is going to be big and i don't think that they'll see a hit in the animated stuff because not everybody that watches live action watches the animated stuff so who people who are excited about the animated sh- shows are still going to watch the animated shows. Who knows? They might put Bad Batch Season 2 on Wednesday and um, and or on Thursday. That's true. Yeah, I, like Nathan said, the people who are going to watch the animation are going to already watch and or anyway. So it's not like it's really going to draw from, from one or the other. The only thing that'll happen is it'll delay the people who do watch the animation from watching it right away. You know, like us, we may not be able to get to the bad batch because chances are, we're probably going to prioritize and or over the bad batch, but we're going to go back and watch the bad batch eventually anyway, every week. Right. Yes. So while it may not be on release day, we're still going to watch it. So I, I don't think it's going to hurt that. Do bad. you think that there is something that happens in and or that ties into the bad batch and they're going to release those together as a result? Maybe that's what the timing of this is about. I don't know. Maybe it's possible, but I feel like that could just be unlikely. Okay. For, yeah, that's cool. I feel like we've we've speculated that before with certain things. I can't remember what yeah. off the top of my head and, and never really okay. panned out. So uh, Tony Gilroy came out and said that they aren't filming using the volume. Uh, they are using practical sets for everything. What do you think about it? Uh, Nate, you talked about this, but how do you feel about, you know, the, the look of the series and specifically not using the volume? Do you feel like it makes a big difference? Um, I, I think the volume itself is a genius thing. But there is something else about practical that just feels more real. Um, I I mean, if you're trying to make worlds that we haven't seen before and is difficult to recreate, then the volume is great. But he understands what we're doing with this. He helped with Rogue One. So he kind of gets this whole vibe and what what they're going for. So I think that it's completely fine not using the volume. And it and it looks great. Um, it It'll be... F- I think it helps with the visual effects as well. They don't have as much to do. Uh, they can focus a little bit more on the CGI. Um, but I, I think it's it's exciting. Yeah, I think traditional filmmaking is always going to have its place. There's a reason why it's existed for so long and it's worked so well. Because it's all they had? Well, yeah, but, (laughs) you know, but I mean, I'm just saying that it has a, a, you can't always, you can't beat the real thing. You know, you can, it's like Jurassic Park. You've got the animatronic dinosaurs and you got CGI dinosaurs and you can clearly tell which one's which and which one looks better. And it's the animatronic because it's physical, right? The volume is fantastic. And frankly, if they didn't tell me that a lot of the, sh- the shots that they filmed were in the volume, I would have never known. But I think they want this series to have a big 
feel. A lot of the shots are wide shots. They're outside. They've got a big feel to it. Very cinematic, like Nathan said. And I think it's harder to capture that dynamic in something like volume. It needs to feel like Rogue One and Rogue One right. wasn't filmed in the volume. Plus, they aren't required to film in the volume. They The, the reason the volume um, was was so impactful for so many different productions and had to be used in so many different productions was because of COVID and the pandemic. We know it was created earlier than that for Mandalorian season one. Right. But a lot of the volume stuff has been been created for or been uh, stuff that's been filmed in the volume was because of the pandemic. They don't have to do that. They if they if they can stay in a certain world for long enough, and they don't aren't changing planet to planet every season like we do with the mm-hmm. Mandalorian and things like that. Then you can do this and make it work. I think it works great. Yes, sir. Uh, we get our first look at Cassie and as a child on his home planet of Fest. Interesting. Um, he's wearing some serious rags and very ill-fitting mm-hmm. clothes, things that doesn't look like that's what his clothing uh, is. Um, he's sneaking into an Imperial uh, facility in that, so that was an interesting thing. Then we also see a lot of Ferrix, which is another planet. It's, people are comparing it to Bracca. I'm uh, getting a lot of vibes from that. Mm. Um, and then we get some really cool shots um, of returning to Coruscant and it's so cool the way that they're they're flying through Coruscant like it's filmed with a drone obviously it's all CG right but it's like they're flying through with a drone because that's what we're used to seeing with our eyes now yeah. and filmmaking on mm-hmm. that where do you think uh, most of this series is going to take place hmm I mean, we're going to see a lot on Coruscant with um, Mon Mothma's storyline. I don't really foresee her going off planet much. And I'm not sure we see much of like Yavin 4 yet. I don't think we're at that point in the rebellion. No, Yavin seems- 4 happens in season three of Rebels. Season four of Rebels. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so- no, 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 you're right. You're right. Man, we need to rewatch that show. Um, <laughs> we say that every time we talk yeah, about Rebels. Literally, right. we say a statement about Rebels and then we say we ought to rewatch that show. Um, so. I think we see a lot of Coruscant with her in that. The other stuff, it's hard to say because the Rebellion, especially at this point, tends to bounce around a lot. Mm-hmm. Unless you're the ghost. Well, there is no clear, no clear Rebellion. Right, it's right. just a bunch of different revolutionaries. So we'll probably see Andor and Saw and uh, I forget the new character. Hera. Uh, no. <laughs> no. Rail. Okay. Yeah. And, and his character, um, bounce around from cell to cell, helping out, doing spy work, things like mm-hmm. that. So it'll probably be all over the place. Yeah. I think, I think it's good. Like what Sam said, it has to be all over the place. Uh, there's nothing else you can do with this type of series. You can't have it set on one place. Um, especially for Cassian. Um, Mon Mothma can stay on Coruscant. She might go off planet a little bit though. I wouldn't be surprised, but Overall, it has to move around. I get the feeling that you're going to have Mon Mothma in one storyline. You're going to have Cassian in another storyline. And then you're going to have Luthan Rail, who seems to be the go-between. He's yeah, the, I think that what we're going to learn in this is Luthan Rail is the, is the, the, individual that brings the rebellion together and then he's going to die because he doesn't we don't see him in rebels we don't see mm-hmm. him in rogue one we don't see him in a new hope so yeah. obviously so um he, you know they, they they're going to have to kill him off he's going to sacrifice himself but he's the one that's going to kind of bring everything together we'll talk a little bit more about him because uh, he's really a fascinating character um it's obvious he's a rebel leader um, in this, but then we see these scenes where he like puts on the, the imperial facade. He's got this different hair rings. style, the rings. He's in this antique thing. There's some Mandalorian armor in the back, and that's really cool. I didn't see that. Um, with cool. it, like antiquities and stuff like that. Um, and then we see this moment where he interacts or he at least enters the room with Mon Mothma. We know they know each other, mm-hmm. but do you think that he and Mon Mothma know that they're on the same side? I- I don't know. I don't think so. But again, we don't know enough about the character to know that. Um, we don't know enough about anything. Really, this trailer didn't give us much on the plot side. Uh, it was it was still another that teaser. That makes it a good trailer. And that, right. again, it makes it a good trailer. I mean, I would have liked a little bit more to know, to, to know what I'm getting into. But I have a feeling they don't know they're on the same side. And that would add for some interesting plot storylines. But yeah, I don't know where it'll go with that. I get... I get bad vibes from his character. I think he he's not. You're just jaded. Good, maybe, and <laughs> but I just feel like he's a bad guy for some reason. I just get that. Vibe. Maybe that's I, I don't know. Maybe I'm crazy. I don't know if we're supposed to be getting that vibe. But something about he him, does seem off. Yeah, there there's something. something more going on behind the scenes. I don't know if he's full on like imperial trying to like 
you know, squ- squash this rebellion, but there's something behind the scenes that's not good with him. Yeah, we'll have to see. I'm, I'm excited about this character. I do think mm-hmm. he's going to be fascinating. Yes. Um, we're getting a lot of politics in this series. That is very clear. I know you referenced very. that a minute ago, uh, Nate or Sam. Um, we get to see the Galactic Senate. It's open once again um, mm-hmm. and functioning. With the so they, Imperial symbol in the middle. That was, was cool. pretty amazing um, with that. So you guys think that uh, Crazy Uncle George is, is uh, laughing at the criticisms of the prequels and no, the political stuff? No, because this is going to have good writing and dialogue. Um, oh my God. No. <laughs> but I mean, one of the criticisms of The Phantom Menace is if you don't understand the title crawl, the rest of the politics of the movie makes zero sense. I still hardly understand what the politics of the Phantom Menace is. Train routes? And it's like, it's still confusing. <laughs> wow. Taxes? Like, I, I don't think the politics in this storyline are going to be so up, like... Convoluted? Right. I, it's not going to be like, ooh, it's they're taxing this trade route and that's where the conflict comes from. It's going to be the okay, there are people within this group that do not support the larger, like, group. You know, there's going to be people who are... Right. That's the story. That's a lot easier to follow than, oh, well, this guy said he was going to pay X amount of money for this, but that didn't work out, so these guys are fighting now, and we got to handle... It's not going to be all convoluted like that. I think that we will be seeing a lot of politics, but I don't think that they will be as weird as Phantom Menace was. I don't think that... I don't think that George Lucas really cares. <laughs> no, you're he's, right. He he's doesn't. rolling in the nose. He doesn't just, care. He doesn't care. He doesn't even know. He's like, oh, there's an Andor series. <laughs> Who's, Who's Andor? Andor? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, I think that he's just he's just living his life. I think that people are going to definitely, if the politics are heavy in this show, start relating that to how Disney went back to the politics side and no, they are gonna, all that they stuff. Are and, 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 and people are just going to get frustrated about I it think it's because more... everybody gets frustrated about something. But I think that I'm very excited to see the politics side of this because I think it'll be very good, especially with the director helming it. I think you'll add a very good little political thriller aspect to it rather than just a politics show. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know, designated survivor or something. Like, <laughs> uh, the West Wing. In, the West Wing. Yes. Yeah. yeah that, that we're would not going to be getting That out. would be very different. All right. <laughs> um, Sagarera. Yes. Is yeah, back. that was cool. Um, younger, still uh, possessing all of his limbs, it looks like. <laughs> yeah. Um, with maybe that, we, not nearly maybe as we damaged. Get that story kind of, in this kind of show. The, the, the closer to the Rebels era. Well, before Sagarera. the Rebels era, too, though. It looks um, a lot like it. it's, him. Yeah. it's kind of between mm-hmm. what we've seen. Are we going to see the ugly uh, side of the rebellion in this? Because mm, the, we'll re- the book Rebel Rising is violent. And Sagarera's Rara's partisans are terrorists yeah i think we'll like see some of they it. don't care who if they kill innocents and that's right. i mean going that's going back to Hera. she is absolutely against using him in rebels because of how violent he has become mm-hmm. and same with mon mothma i'm sure that we will see in this series mon mothma get exposed to the ugly side of saw Gerrera's rebellion and that's what makes her not like him see that's what i think we've got with luther rail i think luther rail is going to be the guy he's going to hear about this he's, he's going to be this guy in the middle that that is tied into all of these different little insurgencies and mm-hmm. he's gonna he he's gonna discover what's happening with Mon Mothma. He's gonna know about Sars per, uh, partisans. He's gonna find out about what the separatist uh, uprising, you know, with Andor is over here. And he's gonna be the guy that's trying to bring this all together throughout the storyline. I don't think it's gonna work with Saw because it doesn't no. um, with that. But right. I think that maybe uh, here's here's a wild prediction, sure to go wrong, way in advance. At some point, do we see Saw Gerrera kill Luthen Rail? Maybe. I, I I could see it. That would totally be a very it. Saw thing to do. Mm-hmm. And it would, yeah, it would help draw those lines between him and Mon Mothma. Yeah. It would set his, the precedent for his character, and like his reputation and all that. Yeah, I like it. All right. Well, I guess we'll have to wait an extra three weeks uh, for Ander. But after that trailer, I think it's going to be well worth that wait. Yes, sir. Um, with that. All right, gentlemen, is there anything else you guys want to talk about? Anything else? Yeah. Rings of Power showrunner, showrunner confirms Amazon passed on a young Aragorn show. Well, what okay. do you think? Would you have liked that? I would have. And I don't think that means that they can't go back to that in the future. 
I think they could totally bring that story out, and I think people would love it. That's cool. And it would be cool because I really don't think there's much established canon for that. No. no. Uh, John Boyega shuts down rumors he's joining Marvel Cinematic Universe. It's like, basically, I'm kind of Dang. tired of being a part of these big franchises yeah. for a while. Uh, so he's just in little smaller movies, so, yeah, which is cool. Good. Uh, Star Wars Padawan novel is um, kind of a, a young Obi-Wan Kenobi mm-hmm. story. Uh, is a New York Times bestseller. Congratulations. Oh, nice. This is actually a big deal because this is the first time a young adult age oh, wow. novel from star wars has made it to the new york times bestseller. that's awesome so very i think it's the first time that's what I, I think i read but um it is a big deal so all right very cool I, that's going to do it for this week thank you so much for listening uh, to tatooine sons a pulp culture podcast yeah. <laughs> if you had a good time listening it would be awesome if you could share this with your friends yeah and the show is only a small part of the tatooine sons world so like us on facebook and follow us on twitter and join our facebook discussion group to get in on all the action going on outside the show and you can keep up to date with everything we've got going on at tatooine sons.com that's right and don't forget to follow the show on your favorite podcast listening application application okay application. might as well so old appetizer uh, not appetizer very different <laughs> um anyway uh we do want follow us okay so you don't miss the next episode um give us a review on apple podcast or spotify or whatever podcast app you prefer uh, i don't think we've seen any of those come through lately so i got to double check because i don't get the updates that i used to get so i need to find out but thank you guys if you have given us a review and we'll keep uh, <laughs> we'll keep looking for them all right anything else you gentlemen would like to say may the force be with you may the force be with you may the force be with you always this party's over. I like that monkey. Don't get technical with me. Join, please. Yep, yep.